Hiatal hernias, huh? Well, that is a teeny bit of a niche topic, but a surprisingly large amount of people like this comment, so let's do it. Even though some people out there don't like when I start my videos off by defining things, I'm gonna do it anyway. Inside this box is how much I care. Oh. The term hernia just means that an organ is moving into a location it's normally not supposed to be in. And the term hiatal in this case is referring to something called the esophageal hiatus, which is this tiny little hole in the diaphragm that allows the esophagus to go from the chest cavity into the abdominal cavity. And for those of you that didn't pay attention in high school anatomy class, <laughs> you guys are probably too busy shooting spitballs at the chalkboard anyway. Who am I kidding? Most of you watching this video are probably too young to have ever seen a chalkboard in real life. The diaphragm is this thin little layer of tissue that separates the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity. And since the esophagus starts in the neck and travels through the chest and ends in the abdomen, it's going to need itself a little bit of a port to grant itself entry into the badlands known as the abdominal cavity. So for those of you that are actually still watching this video, that means by definition, a hiatal hernia is simply the displacement of something that's supposed to be in the abdomen through a tiny little hole in the diaphragm into the chest cavity. Now there are four different types of hiatal hernias depending on what is herniating and how it's doing so, but the most common type in dogs and cats is gonna be type one, where a small portion of either the stomach or a part of the esophagus that's normally supposed to be in the abdomen are what's herniating into the chest. Hiatal hernias can either be congenital, meaning the diaphragm just didn't form properly at birth, or they can be acquired due to a whole bunch of different things. Damn, that's a big list. And yes, sadly, Frenchies and Bulldogs are more predisposed to getting these things because of their atrocious anatomy. Thanks, backyard breeders! So there's a pretty big list of clinical signs of hiatal hernias, but surprisingly a good chunk of animals don't actually show clinical signs when they have a hiatal hernia because they don't always cause issues and a lot of times they are a completely incidental finding. While we can sometimes diagnose hiatal hernias with things like x-rays, x-rays don't always give us a clear-cut answer if a hernia is there. Sometimes we have to use contrast x-rays or better yet, we have to use advanced imaging like either a CT scan or something called fluoroscopy, which is essentially just a live x-ray series. Obviously, when it comes to treating hiatal hernias, if the pet's not showing any clinical signs, we don't have to treat it. Now, for those that are showing clinical signs, if they're showing signs of things like esophagitis, we'll manage those with medications, but the only way to actually treat a hiatal hernia for those that are clinical for it is to surgically correct it. 